We're off to where now? The real deal. Yeah, the OG Rebel Stoke. The Re one, the only, the Revy. It's been on my bucket list for a good 10 years and uh, we're gonna check that baby off. Yeah. So, we're gonna have a nice enjoyable drive now. We are. Let's do it, my friend. Let's do it, onward. Kev, we found this uh, lovely establishment that is looks like an old school or an old bank or something like that. It's called Old School Eatery. Old school, I feel like I'm back in class. I could be in the principal's office. You've been, you know, getting detention, but hey, well, where else would I rather be with this kind of food? Yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, we're in Rebel State. We've been waiting for this moment for a oh, long time. Man. We've got to fuel up and get ready for our next day. I'm really keen to come back. This establishment looks super cool. I'm pretty keen to come back here and meet the owner or the chef and find out more, more about the story of the conversion of the old school and uh, see what's in, in order for lunch. How are you liking your martini? Oh, it's super tasty. Super tasty. They do a good job next door. Yeah, I bet. I'll have to check that out later. I'm Chris. Chris. Justin. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Yeah. How did you get this awesome building? Yeah, we. I lucked out. I spent a couple years looking for a place. And then this came up about a little over a year ago. Um, so it just felt like the right place. I wanted something unique. Um, you know, my idea behind this restaurant was I saw a couple holes in the, in the dining scene here. Like, you know, I thought there was a little bit of a market in the breakfast. So we, we do a brunch every day. And I thought there was a little bit of an opportunity in the casual dining, sort of in between fine dining and sort of more to casual pub food. 
So we're trying to fill that hole here, which I think, I think we are. And what do you love most about the mountain life? That's a great question. It's a kind of a hard one to answer, to be honest. I've been around it for about 15, 16 years, moved from Whistler to here. Um, Whistler was a great experience, but uh, coming here feels more like home. Um, this is a great community, a lot of history here. Yeah. Hey, is your chef around at all? Do you reckon I'd be able to have a chat to him? Yeah, let me go get him. His name's Tom, Tom. and he comes from your part of the world. He's Australian too. Cheers, done a great job. Overseas. Yeah, I'll go get him now. Okay, thanks. Tasty blades, tasty blades, tasty blades. Oh my gosh, look at this. Hey, my man, good hey, work. Dude. Yeah, hey, Justin. Justin, Tom, nice to meet you. This is, uh, this is my um, beef ribs dish. So basically it's been uh, slow braised for six hours um, in like a vermouth jus. So or a, a, it's basically beef stock, vermouth, uh, garlic, ginger. That's cooked really, really slow until it like sort of falls off the bone. And then we take it out before it loses too much of the volume. Um, Served with parsnip mash, um, and or these are all organic vegetables that we've got from one of our suppliers called Mara Valley. Yeah. Um, all organic, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just like heirloom carrots, garlic chips, and a gremolata. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna chow down on this. I know you're probably still busy in there, but uh, after I finish this, we sit down and have a chat about all things sure, Australia yeah. and Canada. Absolutely, yeah, just give me a moment. I'll be out. No worries. Sweet. Thank you. Hey, your, your beef ribs were uh, spot on. Great, um, thank you very much. Unbelievably good. So, um, the menu, was it your baby put together? Um, bits and pieces. We, I kind of collaborated with Chris a lot. Um, we kind of, we, and over like, a, I don't know, three weeks or so, we talked about a few things and basically took some things off and changed a few things, but came to agreements with a lot of them. And yeah, we both have a lot of influence on it for sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah but. Uh, yeah, I've done a few things for sure. Yeah. Besides the uh, the ribs there, is there something else that you're pretty proud of that you're putting out to uh, the punters? Yeah, uh, the rabbit the rabbit ragu is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I also like my pork tenderloin dish. Speaking of cooking, I've brought you, I know you enjoy oh. the ribs, so I've brought you a couple other dishes for you yeah, to try. Yeah, let's do it. This is uh, Tom's rabbit pappardelle, which is a fantastic dish. And this is also a dish that's been on the menu since the beginning, which is our Bayou Bouillon base. Ooh. But you definitely have to try those. All right, thanks, Chris. Sweet, thanks. So tell me a little bit about uh, this bad boy. Uh, okay, so this is, I think it's traditionally, it's pretty sure it's a Creole dish, Creole-based dish. So it's from South USA. Um, it's a, meant to be, basically the theme of old school is, is comfort food. Yeah. But it's also old twists, old old meals with a new twist. Basically, um, we've just tried to recreate that with this dish here. And the uh, the rabbit. The rabbit is, yeah, that's um, obviously pappardelle comfort food, yeah. pasta comfort food. Yeah. But a lot of I noticed a lot of places here didn't actually have rabbit in yeah. anything. Like I haven't seen rabbit anywhere. So yeah, we um, confit the rabbit, turn it into a ragu, um, and then yeah, we like charred the. Um, cherry tomatoes, mm. then we've got queso fresco and sh chiffonade radicchio. Oh, cool, man. Well, yeah, we'll tuck into this in a moment, but um, thanks for coming out and having a, a chat to me. I will ask how many, um, how much time are you getting on the mountain? Uh, quite a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah, pretty good. I've done, I think, I think I've had 22 days already yeah. since the start of December. All in powder? Or close pretty to much, it. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It's been pretty good. So, so yeah. it is great though doing seasons, isn't it? Seriously. Yeah, it's amazing. Do the seasons, your technique gets so much better. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah doing it for almost every day. So. Yeah. All right, ma'am. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a bite to eat. Yeah. Go next door and have uh, some gin tasting. Yeah. Thanks for coming to see me. No worries. Make sure you get up the mountain tomorrow. I will. <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> Hey, 
Megan, the distiller here at Jones Distilling. Yeah. Wow, what a job. I know, it's you, a great job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lucky, lucky person living in Revelstoke, firstly. Yeah, we're doing all right over here. Yeah. <laughs> and you're a distiller. How cool is that? Probably the best job ever. Yeah. yeah. How, how long have you been distilling? When did um, that come to you? So I originally started brewing beer, uh, which I started eight years ago. Four years into brewing, I learned how to distill. Um, distilling was just kind of like the niche market that I saw and just kind of ran with. Yeah. Um, what I really loved about distilling was it was a lot like beer, where I could make kind of any different types of like uh, combinations of flavors, which I thought was really cool. And really what stuck out to me was gin, um, just because it was kind of lawless. There was no real rules to it other than juniper and you could mix anything you wanted with it and that's what I thought was awesome. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked on what we can do here and what I've made so far at Jones and yeah, I'm very excited about where we're at. So tell me a little bit about the ingredients that goes into... Yeah, so um, all of our base comes from BC Pale Malt, which we get from Armstrong. So it's local to us as well. Yeah. Um, that's the only sugar content in our vodka. Uh, and then we just use Rebel Stoke water, which is really good water just from the Greeley Bowl Reserve, which yeah. is awesome, just on the ski hill. And then um, all we use is yeast from Vancouver just in order to actually ferment the, uh, like, the grain. Yeah. Um, and all of our process is just behind us here. With our gin, we use international botanics. So uh, we use juniper, coriander, angelica root, and orris root. Um, with those, that's our base gin. And then with all the rest of our gins, I just kind of added um, other international botanics. And then with our bathtub gins, we collaborated with OTs as well, which is a locally owned tea company in town. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, we did some really awesome stuff with them and created some really cool flavors and really awesome colors and a very unique set of gins. So. Yeah, I'm very excited about them. Yeah, I bet you are. Yeah. So, hey, can I uh, get a taste of Absolutely, some of these uh, yeah. beautiful gins you've got going on? For sure. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of start left to right here. We're going to start off with the London Dry Style Gin. Uh, this is our gin number one. We started making this uh, at the start of last year. Um, we threw it into the SIP Awards this year as well, and we took double gold yeah, on it. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Yeah, we have an award, lovely. <laughs> yeah, the Civil Awards is an international competition oh, out of California. Yeah, uh, 977 entrants, so I'm pretty stoked on double gold. That was a Oh my good gosh, that's high five that, <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah, with our London Dry Style Gin, the juniper element is toned back a little bit, and then the citrus elements are brought forward. Oh, wow. So there's bitter orange, grapefruit, lemon peel, a little bit of chamomile just to tone it all back, and licorice root to dry it out. Yeah, yeah. Let's so we're gonna it. try that one first. I have a, become a little bit of a gin lover in recent years. Perfect. Oh, hang on. Do you need to, like, wine? You can no? switch it if you want. <laughs> just try it straight, and then you can always just add a little splash of tonic just to open it up. Mm. Super smooth. Thanks. Very yeah, nice. Very smooth. No wonder that made the judges happy. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, so the first one is our strawberries and cream. Uh, this one was definitely a fan favorite. It is a little bit sweeter out of the rest of them, but definitely give this one a try straight. And then I recommend it with a little bit of tonic. Okay. Mm, certainly delicious. Yeah. They are definitely unique. Uh, kind of unlike anything else that you would have tried yeah. before. This is, um, yeah, they're just well presented too, beautifully. And you've got your own little different um, branding on each of them to For sure, obviously yeah. show us what it is. Yeah, all the labels, all the colors, all the Flavors and aromas are all different. No mm. two taste the same. So there's definitely something unique and for everyone in this mix. And this one is our go big or go gnome. Go gnome? Yeah. So Norm, who measures the um, snowfall on the ski hill, he's on the label there. Mmm. Nice and winter spicy for sure. Yeah, that'll clear up any uh, colds or flus or anything like that. That is epic. Thank you.
Megan. You got Thank it you. No worries. You've done well. Thank you. Telling me uh, everything about these uh, gins. Absolutely fantastic. I'm almost half cut, <laughs> but I do it for the team. Hooray. <laughs> Mr. Jones Distilling and uh, Revelstoke, number one. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's been epic. Yeah, for sure. This has been fun. Hey, how cool is this? The Revelstoke Grizzlies are playing tonight. Ice hockey at its finest. Let's go and check it out, folks. Sure to be a hoot in here. Let's have some fun.